exercise one the cat. This is the second time I'm I've actually redone this. Um, first time was done version six of the cat. I'm gonna go ahead and do it in version eight. There's some enhancements and also I'm just gonna modify this part a little bit. So if you've watched this before, there's not gonna be a whole lot new. Um, so I don't know if you want to waste your time with it. Regardless, though, if it's your first time watching one of my exercises, in this case exercise one, I think you'll get a lot out of this one. Okay, we're going to begin. You'll notice the interface. I like to turn on the Concepts Explorer, the Inspector, and the Snaps. All these can be brought up by window and checking Snaps, Concepts Explorer, and Inspector. There is Render Library and some of these other neat options, but uh, we're not going to turn those on. Also, I, check, I turned on my background here. And the way you could do that is uh, if you right, not left, but right click on this where it says via up here, you could go to preferences and left click on preferences. And you can see there's colors, in this case the foreground, uh, but in this case uh, I have it set for background. And you can set up different colors like four color gradient or two color. And you can see I just tinkered with some of them. You just click on whatever color you'd like and you can apply it. Uh, some of the other settings for the display, you can see there's solids, curves, surfaces. So for example, solids, I have the resolution set to super fine, but if you have a aging computer or maybe a, a very not powerful computer, you might want to set that to fine or medium. And if you get a larger assembly going several parts, you might want to actually set it to something like medium or coarse. Silhouettes I generally like to turn off. The edges I like to set to black. By default they go with white, which is okay. Uh, I prefer that turned off. Pen weights off. And all right, so um, and also printed line cap. I like it set to round. I think it's square by default. You also have additional options in here. I don't change a whole lot of them. You can use the grid. The units, inches, three decimal places. As you can see, you go eight decimal place precision. And then finally, a resolution. You can set to super fine or fine or medium. I set mine to super fine. I have a pretty decent graphics card. Go ahead and hit OK. Just uh, as an FYI, again, you could go to factory settings if you want to reset everything. OK, I'm going to begin with the rectangle tool. Now, you could use the line tool to do this, a multi-line. I'm going to go with the rectangle though. Rectangle is pretty easy. Notice there are several options that appear. If these don't appear, you can click up here and you see that little corner, or there's a little corner right there. So there's center rectangles, three point. We're going to go with di uh, diagonal polygon. Just click and drag this out. Click again to drop it. Now over here in the left line here, we have single line or smart polygon. We'll go with um, it really doesn't matter in this case. Single line I prefer because if you ever want to modify something, it's pretty easy. But um, here we could go over here and set this. The width needs to be set to 3. And the height should be 5. Hit enter. And then actually conforms to that size. Now I probably had my color set up to yellow for my curves. Uh, I'm not sure why I set that up. But if you ever want to change them, you can always just glide over them. And then over here you have options like, um, in this case, you could go to black or whatever you prefer and change it. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I want to go ahead and add a circle. If I click on this little arrow to the right of the circle, you'll see there's a center point circle. Click and then just locate it over here somewhere, drag it out. Now this needs to be 0.75, and then also the location should be 4. In the uh, y direction and one inch offset in the x, so we just located it that way. Now you can add dimensions if you like here. Um, the dimensions aren't really it says smart dimensions; they're not intelligent dimensions. They're not parent, there's no parametrics here. There's it is history based though, but uh, you'll see if you ever want to go back, you just simply click on something. So for example, if I right click on this and I select chain. I could go back and change those parameters, like 3 by 5 and things like that. OK, now what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and I want to extrude that. I'm just rotating with my middle mouse button, by the way. I just hold it down and drag. And now you'll see over here you have options. If you have this little arrow, it looks like a, as a revolve feature, you will find the extrude solid. You can select that, and then you put in 
you have distance vector to object midplane then extrude we're going to set it to a distance and the distance we actually let's set it, keep it at one technically one to be 0.5 but you'll see what happens here just click and drag a fence around it and it goes ahead and extrudes that now if we don't like it that thick we could always go back and set the uh, distance here to 0.5 that automatically updates and now if I hit this, this uh, select button takes you out of that selection mode. If you ever need to change it, you just click on it again. You can see you can change it, adjust this. These little arrows here actually allow you to scale it and rotate it and move it. We're not going to position it right now. It's good if you have an assembly though, but right now we're not going to use that. There's also this neat little tool here, push pull, just as an FYI. If you ever click on that, you could grab a corner and you just drag. And you could extend things. And it gives you the distance and you can actually type in an explicit value for that. I'm just going to go to edit and undo that move. All right, now at this point, we want to go ahead and add an additional sketch on here. So I'm going to go back to the rectangle tool. Again, we could use a line tool, but we'll go with the rectangle and lock into this corner and drag it out to this edge. You'll see it will snap to the edges. It's a really nice tool. You could lock in. And then here we could just set the height. So the height needs to be 1.5, and it's already positioned. Now I have yellow on yellow. If you want, like you could change the color of this part. You just click on it. And then over here we could select like magenta or blue, whatever we like. Now we can actually see that yellow sketch highlighted. Now just as an FYI, if we go back to preferences, I'm really not liking the colors. Let's go to the curve. And I'm trying to remember where that setting is for the color it might actually be under draw I'll have to find it anyway we could go back later now instead of extruding another solid if you want to extrude solid you'd have to add them that's a boolean operation we don't really want uh, we, it, which is fine actually it works fine but this way there's protrusion solid which actually merges the two as one as you extrude it so in this case we have a vector or to body or set to a distance and we want the distance to be 0.5 and all we do is we first have to just read what says select protrusion for solid. We want this solid. Then select the closed curves and just surround that geometry that you want to extrude. Now it went to one inch distance. Just type in 0.5 and update it. And there it is. Now these curves here that are, that you can always um, right click on those. Oops. Lines. And we can hide them. And you can actually go to. Um, layers and drop them on layers. I'm just going to hide it though. Okay, now let's take a look at some of the other tools here. We have the fillet tool. If you don't see it, there it is right there. Fillet. You can go ahead and select the edges, type in a value that you'd like. In this case, let's make it one inch. A little bit bigger. Click there and there. What you're seeing below there is the sketch. And actually, I'm going to just hide that sketch there. Okay. There's also the chamfer tool. If you click on the little arrow, you'll find chamfer. And we can set it to 0.25 and just select the edges. And if you don't like the size, let's put an additional one in front of it, so 0.125, make it a bit smaller. Select this edge as well. Okay, uh, just as an FYI in there, there's also a great hole tool. If you click on hole, you see there's countersinks, there's counter bores, standard hole, and you can put in all the different parameters here for the sink angle, countersink, draft angle, diameter. Very nice tool. Let's rotate this around. Now we're going to go ahead and shell this out. And if you go over here, there's actually the shell command. We have a shell feature. And set the to point 0.1 for the offset. And we want uh, click, let's go ahead and uh, if we hold control we could select the open faces Oops. And in this case uh, I let me undo that I'll try that again okay. you see there it actually shelled that out there but um, if we hold shift I believe you could also find on the feature tree, like for example, I want to get these other faces added. If you go to the feature tree, rotate that a little bit better. 
and if you go to features, click on the actual, hit uh, select, click on the actual model, and here's the feature tree. In chronological order of everything we've done. Go back to shell, and we could go ahead and we could edit that. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and delete it. Let me just right click on it, and then there is remove feature. Now let's go back and try that again. Select the shell, this out the shell. And I believe if we hold shift, we could select multiple faces. There we go. Now release shift. And there we have our shell model. Okay, if there's anything that you want to hide, this is the time to do it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and bring that into a drawing. Now for the drawing, you just click over here. This is the drawing tool. And select the model. Now we're going to go ahead and set this and set it to a quarter scale. I think actually half scale should fit pretty nicely on the A landscape. But notice they have a whole selection of ANSI and ISO sizes. Polylines are faster. Um, these others don't really work that well. Uh, for if you want dimension, I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And there we could see the actual geometry. OK, and so as you can see, we have the different views available here. If you want to go ahead and add dimensions, you have to select the view and you get a border around each view. Once you get that border, that means you could go ahead and add dimensions. Now, in here, you have a whole selection of dimensions. There's the smart dimension. Sometimes it's easier just to just use the vertical and horizontal dimensions to get what you want as um, might get some unusual effects that appear. Okay. And also there's some attributes here that um, are helpful in, if, in the event that um, you want to make sure you get more decimal places. Let's go back here and click on that. And I found that should actually let's right click over here preferences. Thought I had it set to let's set to three. Okay, I'll have to figure that one out. I, anyhow, so you can see you can add dimensions that way. Let's add another one. Now you see there's also baseline dimensions, vertical baseline, and vertical chain. And of course, you could do the center points and things like that. Let's switch that out. Let's go with a center mark. And just select the edge. Now with the center mark over here, we could uh, adjust that for the overlap. Let's set it to actually 0.25. Make it a bit smaller. And you can see here there's different types of center lines and center bisectors that you could add. Now let's go back to the uh, radius here. Want to add the radius? Let's click on that. Add one there. And it's here. Now there are some limitations to. You can't move them around. You just have to click on them. Uh, if you get the full version, it's just Shark FX. It gives you uh, more options. I'm not a, perf a great expert on updating some of these values here, but there's definitely some neat things you can do. Drag this one out. In. And usually the attributes you could find over here, and so on and so forth. If you need to, you can also grab this, drag it down a little bit to add to that. Okay, and that concludes exercise one.